I get into today's video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you have not done so already. So today is day three in South Carolina and we are currently on our way to do a Taurus, I mean a, well it's a Taurus uh, thing, right? There's a Taurus area. Area. Um, so we're gonna do a tour of one of the main tourist areas here. So stay tuned Mom Pleasant, for Mom Pleasant that. Mount Pleasant and it's Charles and Street, but right. it's, it's both. So stay tuned for that. We are super excited. Um, babe, you didn't say hi and neither did Jazz. Hello. And Jordy sleeping as always because she does not fail. And I don't want them to see that yet because aren't we going to do that? Yeah. So we'll show them the that once we do right. it. Um, but yeah, so we are parking now. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, guys. We hope your day is filled with lots of love and lots of fun. So as soon as we get to where we're going, I will definitely show you guys again it is another rainy day here so we'll try to make the best of it with the rain we will catch you guys in the middle all right guys so i'm here i grabbed uh the goodies for valentine's day and i'm gonna bring them to sarah uh while we take a, a private tour on the carriage and i have the goodies for the girls and the roses for my wife and look at well hello happy valentine How you like it so far? It hasn't started yet. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, so far from there. The, the, <laughs> the official <laughs> story. Yeah. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. You want to eat your chocolate? I'll eat it. Yeah. After <laughs> Well, the horse is pulling us. <laughs> hey, Jeremy. Yeah, so this is the same mark in here. We'll talk about that. Hello, Monica. Um, I'm originally from doing gravestone conservation. That's I do awesome. that most of the week and then I come here and get fair stores on the weekend. Um, the theory behind the design of the building was that it was used to store gunpowder. Oh, if wow. the gunpowder that was inside were ever to blow up, they wanted it to literally they first get here in 1670. But when they get here, they settle about five miles up the Ashley River at a place called Abemaro Point. But this is the South Carolina low country here. It's all marshlands, tidal creeks, there's mosquitoes carrying yellow fever and malaria. It was also a very indefensible location. 
If the French and the Spanish wanted to attack the English, they could have amassed an entire armada out in the harbor. The English five miles up the river would have no idea. So the local friendly Kiowa Native Americans suggest that we come to check the northwest corner back. So you're walking around and see one of those plots. That means you're actually one of the original corners of the world. Oh, wow. And now coming down Laurel Beck Alley right here. This is what y'all wanted to see, right? Yeah. Beautiful back in the days in yeah, our town. For real, for real. Uh -huh. Bank building, parking garages. Probably, right? Well, this area of town is called the Burn Zone. In December of 1861, Eight months into the start of the Civil War, and almost a year to the day that South Carolina secedes from the Union, a fire starts about a block away from our barn. Wow. It was eight months into the war, and they had emptied all of the storm drains out, so there's no water here. There's no people to extinguish the fire. It burns for a day and a half, burning over 600 buildings in a diagonal path across the peninsula. Oh my um, God. It finally extinguishes itself out in the Ashley River on our western bank. But this is all part of that burn zone that we're going through. So we had some really bad luck here in Charleston. That fire was right in the beginning of the war. During the war, we have a siege that lasts 587 days on the peninsula. 21 years after the war, we had a 7.3 magnitude earthquake in Charleston. Oh. Yeah, we had some really bad luck. So the buildings that they ended up rebuilding over here in the late 1800s, early 1900s, before they turned 75 years old, they tore them down and built those newer, more modern buildings that you see today. Because anything older than 75 years old cannot be torn down by the hands of man. It has to be an act of God, and that's literally how it's written into the laws here. Wow. So that's all part of the historic preservation, and we'll talk about that on our tour. This is cross over King Street right here. A lot of good shopping here on King Street. back to the early history, uh, the Carolina land grant, that was given from Charles II to eight lords after the English Civil War. Um, Charles II, he had been in exile in France, um, hiding out after his dad, Charles I, gets his head chopped off. Eight lords helped get him back on the throne after the English Civil War. And then, as a thank you, Charles II gives them that Carolina land grant. Um, these eight lords of the colony, they can do whatever they want with this land. And they want to make money. So originally we were a proprietary colony. Uh, meaning they want to make money here. Mm -hmm. To make money in a colony, you need people. To get people to come and settle the colony, they offer freedom of religion. Very radical idea in the 1660s. But because of the Reformation that was going on in Europe, people are coming over taking advantage of the freedom of religion that we offer here. Now, have you heard the nickname here in Charleston? No. The Holy City, have you seen that anywhere? No. Mm -mm. All right. Well, maybe now that I said it, you might notice it in a few places. Okay. It has nothing to do with their behavior. We're a seaport town here in Charleston. We got a bunch of drunken sailors roaming around all the time. <laughs> we also have a bunch of houses of negotiated companionship. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids on board, kids on board. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Now the most famous ones of those houses is that pink building right over there. Now that was run by a lady named Madame Grace. Mm -hmm. When Madame Grace passed away, she had the second longest funeral procession in the state of South Carolina's history. The only person who had the longer funeral procession was John C. Calhoun, twice Vice President, Secretary of War, and Senator for the state of South Carolina. But all of the carriages that went to her funeral were empty. The gentleman who had been going to her establishment couldn't actually be seen going to her funeral, but still wanted to pay their respects, so they sent their empty carriages instead. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's a fun town down here. Now, up until the mid-20th century, they were publishing the Charleston Blue Book, which was pretty much a trip advisor of houses of negotiated companionship. Lists the different locations, the names of the ladies, and had little anecdotes in there as well. Now, this anecdote is from an 1897 Charleston Blue Book, and it takes place in the church right behind me over here. And as the story goes, it's a hot July Sunday. And the reverend, instead of giving a full sermon, he was just going to read the Ten Commandments and send everyone on their way. As he's reading the Ten Commandments, he gets to, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Just then, an elderly deacon slams his cane on the ground. Now, the reverend being concerned for the deacon's age and how hot it was, after he finishes, he goes over to the deacon to ask him if he's all right. And the deacon responds, Oh, yes, I'm fine. I just suddenly remembered where I'd left my umbrella. <laughs> He was also writing letters back and forth with Charles Darwin at the time, so they were doing fairly similar research. Uh, now, Reverend John Bachman is also a philanthropist. So 
during that fire in December of 1861, during the war and the siege, we had a 7.3 magnitude earthquake here too. During all of those disasters, he opened the doors of the church not only to members of his congregation that needed assistance, but to all members of the community. He was still the long time congregation that they buried him underneath the pulpit in that church. Wow. Next on our left hand side, we're going to see the Unitarian Church. Construction of the Unitarian Church. So, construction of the Unitarian Church starts in 1776. They had to stop the construction. Uh, yeah, right behind me over here. Here's one. Uh, they had to stop the construction in uh, 1776 because of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. While the British occupied the city of Charleston, they used the uncompleted church building as stables for their horses. They weren't getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the next building is a house over there. That's the auxiliary oh. hall for the church. That right there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Done in a Richardson Romanesque style. Very popular in the 1890s. Very soft. Henry Hobson Richardson, he was a famous architect, and he did a lot of, he kind of created, Romanesque was one of the styles, but then he kind of, like, takes it into his own and does very unique buildings, so he kind of created his own Richardson Romanesque style, which is kind mm -hmm. of like a subcategory of it. Uh, but if you guys see the graveyard over here, right? Yeah. Looks a little overgrown. It's like that by design. Unitarians believe in an interdependent web of life, meaning after they die, their body goes back into the earth to bring new life. One of the reverends had the graveyard designed in an English garden style, which is kept overgrown and unkempt in order to show that principle of the interdependent web of life. So that's why it's like that on purpose. And they do trim it back. That's why it's not as bad as it normally is. They mm -hmm. trim it back like once every two years. She's like, no. She doesn't want to. I want to, to keep my hand up. I know. It's like, You're her so hand cold, is, man. I know. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised my hands are not that Mine cold is. right now. Four of them thinking that they might be spots for it. Uh, Say hello, guys. Hi. <laughs> So there's not a lot of Catholics here? Dude. Now there are, because there's the Catholic th cathedral right behind me over here, if you look okay. over there. Um, they do allow Catholics down here. Uh, but you know, Savannah, there's way more in, down in other cities they'll find a lot because you know, they don't really like the Catholics down here. Um, but that's actually the second church building that's been on that property over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, right over, right down the street. This that one, there. okay. Yeah. Um, the first one burns in that fire in December of 1861. But when it burns down, they were underinsured. They barely got any money to rebuild that church. Wow. It took the congregation about 60 years of collecting donations before they even lay the first cornerstone. As they were rebuilding, they decided to make it out of a Connecticut brownstone. Very expensive to get all the way down here from Connecticut. Then they etched stars in the outside of all of the stones because God said to Abraham, may your followers be as numerous as the stars. Um, but the congregation was very bad at budgeting their money. They forgot to leave money for the steeple. So oh. the steeple that you see on that church was only put on in 2010. Oh, that was re okay. Yeah. That was recent. Yeah. Okay. Oh, TV talking for us. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. You heard. And it's kind of hard to tell right now, um, just because of all the water on it. But the stone on the top part of the steeple is actually much lighter than the main building because that's a new part they only put on about 11 years ago, and that's also a man-made cast brownstone that's up there because we had no more Connecticut brownstone than they were going to put on in 2010. Additionally, the structural engineer, when he goes, he gets a hold of the original plans for the uh, for the church. He starts running some calculations and realized that if, if, if they had built it to those specifications in the 1920s, the steeple would have been too heavy and collapsed in on itself. So that's why if you notice how the spire on the steeple, it's all that lattice work up there. When the kids leave the orphanage, they'll have a marketable skill to bring into the world. And then also, uh, while the kids are still in the orphanage, they'll form the Jenkins Orphanage Band. They'll put on some concerts. Maybe they can get some money coming in that way. The Jenkins Orphanage Band becomes a groundbreaking jazz band in the early 1900s. They become so famous that they toured around Europe and played for two sitting U.S. presidents. The kids that were on the side of the stage that didn't know how to play the instruments, they'd be doing a weird little dance. No one knew it's called the dance, but knew they were from Charleston. So you know oh, the Charleston, wow. very yep. popular in the mm -hmm. Roaring Twenties, comes from the Jenkins Orphanage Band over there. They were the ones that started that. You can read up on that, there is a I whole book on it too. It's called Doing the Charleston, and it's the history of the Jenkins Orphanage. Now, 
maybe you'll want to read that book, Jess. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. A lot of the local bookstores carry it just because, you know, it's a very Charleston specific book. This house on our right hand side, I just love this one. It's a carpenter gothic, so that's all wood. I just love the columns on it. Mm -hmm. And then next on our right, we'll see the Belvedere Mansion. And this is a uh, Queen Anne Victorian. Uh, we're going to see a lot of Victorian style architecture out this way. Because this area was all marshland. But they don't start developing it until after the Civil War. So we got the Belvedere Mansion. Nice little view at the front over here. That is beautiful. Yeah. Now the next building that you see, uh, this uh, wood frame building had a really bad fire a few years ago. And after that fire, they decided it was a great time and they did a historic home lift on this house. They bricked that house up about five feet. That's what they do here in Charleston. Um, because Colonial Lake, Colonial Lake that's over here, that's fed with water from the Ashley River and it rises and falls with the tides. So, when we have hurricanes, this street where we are right now all floods out. Really? Yeah. So that's one of the precedents that they're setting here in Charleston. Um, they, instead of putting like, you know, a high wall, masonry wall around your property, they would rather you lift your house up. Yeah. Now they knew that also to begin with, but some of the other ones they need to take them up even higher than they are originally. Wow. Yeah, I mean this street where we are right now, Rutledge, um, we had a hurricane a few years ago and there was about three feet of water on this street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People were kayaking where we are right now. Oh. Yeah, we flood all the time. I mean you guys are similar in Tampa, you know. Well Tampa, I mean? yeah, I was I was just gonna say that I'm like we were so close to flood zone mm -hmm. and like uh we're close to, to Bayshore. I don't know if you heard, heard of Bayshore I've Boulevard. Gone, well I've gone to Tampa twice. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, friend a friend of mine, his mom lives down there. Um, and because you know I'm a New Yorker, I went oh. there twice. Oh, okay. Giants played the Bucks, so oh. I went down there for the game. Oh. And then I went down for spring training for the Yankees as well, which is okay. really cool. Um, I like so, your field. Their field is yeah, their spring George field Stryker, is actually George yeah. Really nice. It's really nice. Or the city so that they can fit into those historic fire. Oh my god. Wow. In a way it's neat. Excuse me? In a way it's neat mm. that you know that they have to do that. Yeah. But that that is that is a little a little yeah, yeah a little up, little up the there. Town. Yeah, really. Look but, at the pink uh, house. Yeah, if you guys go to the corner of Meeting and Wentworth, that's one of the original firehouses that's still in operation today. To the haunted side of town. Oh, this is what she wanted to see. Yeah. <laughs> we are coming on to oh. Potter's Field. Whoa. Oh. Have you ever heard the term before? I, no. I, I, I did. Uh, I did. Yeah, it's a biblical term for a big hole in the ground where you put dead bodies. <laughs> I didn't know it was that, <laughs> but I did. I did hear of it. <laughs> You're currently over about ten thousand bodies right now. Oh, oh what? Yeah. Like under, uh, under our feet? Yeah. Oh no. For yeah. real, for real? What? For real? Yeah. Because oh my god. Remember I said everything where we just came from over yeah, there yeah, yeah, yeah. marshlands. The walled settlement over there. Oh my god. This was the of the city, so this is where they were bringing all the dead people and burying them. Wow. Oh my goodness. Now, after they fill in the potter's field over here, they build the medical complex. So Queen Street, where we went out towards Colonial Lake, that's just right over there, about a block in front of us. So that building, the Robert Mills Manor that I pointed out, that's just right over there. But in addition to the medical it. complex, they also build the old city jail. Look at the jail, Josh. That's the jail right there. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Now, this jail was in operation from 1808 to 1939. They shut it down for inhumane conditions because there was never any electricity or running water in the building. Wow. Originally designed to hold about 300 people in the jail, majority of the time it was in operation, it was holding anywhere from 700 to 1,000 people in that building. No. Infections, disease, overcrowding, those were the main causes of death at the jail, not the executions that they were holding out back. During the years of operation, they estimate about 7,000 people died inside of this one building over here. Oh you guys feeling brave today? 
Yeah. yeah. Is Brown bread? Yeah. yeah. The longest continually active run African American run business in the United States. They opened up in 1912. That's awesome. Because remember, early 20th century in Charleston, um, you know, if you were black, that was a way for you to progress and make money by being an undertaker. And also, too, in the early 20th century, that's when you're switching from having wakes and funerals in your own home um, to having it somewhere else. So that's why they named it a home for funerals. Yeah. Oh, okay. They don't believe in monsters, and I told them they were real. <laughs> yeah. The blue eyes real. Paints a blue around the outside uh, of your door. So now, um, are they able to change that color or that color has to stay there on those doors? I saw some that weren't. Yeah, so it's generally the area because like of where the blue one, okay. that's where the potter's field really was. Um, now, I'm sure they can change it um, okay. if they wanted to, but um, that's all public housing over there. It's the longest continually active public housing in the United States. Oh, wow. They built it in 1939. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, most of those buildings are probably yeah, just going to keep on. Yeah, it's crazy, too, because um, here in Charleston, you know, the property value is so high that contractors, they're like chomping at the bit to get over there and turn those into high-priced condos. Oh, really? I've heard a rumor that there's a contractor that offered the city $250 million for all those buildings over there. He said, nope, we don't need the money. Oh. Uh, the property tax is so high on the peninsula that, that they don't need it, you know? Yeah. And the way the property value keeps growing up around the city, they're not missing out on any of the property tax from the adjacent building. So, as for now, the thing getting its cost come on. It's just going to be another minute or two. But while y'all are waiting, have a drink on us. Oh, okay. A little while later. And it was legal. Hold on. <laughs> later comes out oh no the blind tiger has broken a nail don't worry he's finally down please for the inconvenience have another drink on us oh my god he kept coming up with excuses and feeding me those drinks um, because how is their way to get around prohibition the state of South Carolina the rule was you couldn't buy alcohol and you couldn't sell alcohol but you could have it and you could drink it so when you go see the blind tiger show you're paying the admission fee and then they're giving the complimentary drink to go with it. Yeah. They are slickers. Yeah. Slickers. <laughs> what, 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 what is that? <laughs> I thought what you were saying. I thought what you were saying. What is a slicker? <laughs> what? A rain oh, yeah. slicker is what my dad used to do. <laughs> Hall. You see a lot, or going back to the, like, the Romanesque and you know Greek revivals that yeah. you see in American architecture. It looks pretty. I like how this looks. Yeah, <laughs> they're so popular in the 1800s. Because remember, this was the age of antiquities. This was the first time uh, people were seeing ancient Greek and ancient Roman civilizations, and they were emulating that in their architecture. Now, this is the Roman Theater. Now, this is where they had their big so market hall there uh there is a museum up there it's not open today it's going to be open tomorrow um it's pretty cool it's about five dollars admission the price might have gone up so don't quote me on that um but it's all artifacts donated by families of civil war veterans um it's a bunch of really neat stuff in there uh they have a lock of robert oh, Lee's hair Mm. Okay, I so know, with right? your hand, I know, weird. With your hand, hold it with this hand. Here, just switch, switch the hands out. Yeah, yeah. like seriously, so hold it with I... this hand and cover this one. Look, you still have it. Look. <laughs> so yeah, the market here. The reason why there were those bulls and ram heads up at the top there, because the beef and the meat would have been sold up at the top of the market. These would have been sold down by the Cooper River in front of us, and poultry, produce, and all other goods were sold in these sheds. Um, it's an open-air grocery store, essentially. So this is where you're coming to get all your food. Go ahead. You Put your hand in the refrigeration on the food down here. The yeah. butchers are butchering their meat up there, throwing the scraps out into the street. Uh-uh. Oh, oh. uh, cleaning the fish down. Point. There were multiple markets around the city of Charleston. You know, these guys' markets are pretty gross. So the city wants to consolidate all this market activity in one area. Um, six families that were 
So my makeup, my eye makeup, and well, my mouth makeup is messed up because of my mask. But my eye makeup right here, guys, I was doing Jazz Jordy's hair this morning. <laughs> and I was trying to make sure that there was gel like all over in her ponytail area so it didn't get dry. And um, I was like going like this and it was sticking up so like straight and it looked hilarious guys I was laughing so hard that my tears came out and I couldn't fix my makeup because like it was already done so if you guys see like a weird thing here don't mind that I'm gonna try to insert a clip though from when I recorded, we were leaving the hotel and I was like, oh, let me try to do a TikTok of it. So I redid her ponytail like that and um, and I recorded it. So I'm gonna try to, <laughs> I'm gonna try to insert a clip of that here so you guys can see it because it was hilarious, guys. Oh my gosh, I was laughing so hard.
but yeah anyway so we're heading to the restaurant now and I will definitely be able to show you guys what we get to eat at P.F. Chang's today yesterday I couldn't because friendlies took forever to sit us down and then Jordy was not having it like she was taking her shoes off she didn't want to be touched she didn't want anything so I couldn't record at getting dinner yesterday but definitely will today and definitely will record what else we do so stay tuned for more fun and more rain but i got you with you guys in a little all right guys so we are here at my favorite restaurant p f chains if you guys have not tried it before definitely check them out and get the strawberry lime it's there oh wait strawberry cucumber lime it's their best drink all right guys so we are inside pf chains lionel is a little disappointed because they don't have ribs babe how are you feeling babe i'm hoping that um oh i look handsome um that the gentleman that they're they, they're good. I put mine right there. So, okay, where are you gonna we'll go? See. So Lionel like loves to eat Generoso's chicken and I asked her if they had that. Oh my gosh, look, my bangs are coming out. Oh I have water here. Um my bangs are coming out of my hair. Um so yeah, so I asked her if um they had like Generoso's chicken and she said that she has Chang's chicken and I guess it's similar to General so Lionel's gonna try that hopefully he likes it because as we all know he's picky I'll eat some of your sesame yeah that's true because I ordered sesame here yeah, are the girls their coloring and watching Jesse say hi 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 family hi family so yeah, and then here is my favorite drink. It's the cucumber limeade. No alcohol, guys. Here it is. And yeah, so now we're just waiting for our food to get here. We're super excited. Let us know in the comments if you've ever been to P.F. Chang's, how you like it, or if you never have been here, but you want to try it. Um, but yeah. I back with you guys as soon as our food gets here all right guys here is our food yum. wait Jake, yum. 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 careful Jordy. Why are you eating my chicken? Um, I'm, I'm gonna try it. I have some sesame chicken off. Why are you eating my chicken? <laughs> I want some sesame chicken too. Ready to watch video? Um. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and eat my food and I will be with you guys after. All right guys, so we are back at the hotel. This is gonna be the end of today's video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Jordy is a little cranky cause she just woke up from a nap. Um, so please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we will see you guys on our next video. Bye guys.